Hello, my gremlins. Now, today I have a video for you about the most haunted places that I've been. Um, all these are towns, so these are towns that I live next to or in. So, in the future episodes or videos, I, I will probably talk about the major cities like Portland, Eugene, Salem, and Oregon. But for now, I really, really... Actually, all the scary stories that, you know, I've heard and seen are from small towns because I think the lore just travels faster and you know people a lot quicker in town. So, you know, I believe them and why not? I do want to give a disclaimer that it is scary, um, sage, um, <laughs> and also all the websites that I use are going to be linked below as well as the intro song from my boyfriend, um, but yeah. Let's get into it. So the first small town we're going to be talking about in Oregon is on the east side of Oregon in the high desert. And it's called the Lotry Castle. In the vicinity around Burns, um, it didn't really give any addresses. I don't think you can find the address online. I wouldn't want my address up online if I built a castle too. So, in the 1920s, a frontier built a castle in the middle of the high desert. His name is Harry St. George Tudor Wamsganaz. Wait, Wamsgans. Okay. With his wife, Catherine Wamsgans. Said by the great grandniece, Cheyenne Butler, he had huge plans for the castle. Now, he was an expert carpenter who wanted a ballroom and he wanted a venue. He hosted dances and parties for travelers and um, apparently bands would play in his castle if they were traveling from east to west. And interesting enough, I could not find to the left of me that um, how he died or anything, but the castle is still up. And... You know, I think a couple of kids in the 1950s came in and destroyed it. That's why they wiped the address off of the map. And, um, yeah. They would say torn down in the 1950s, but it is still up. The major big, like, story about this castle, though, is about, um, if you go in, like, or break in, because you can't really go into castle. Apparently you can hear like a radio turn on in the top, top room of the castle. That's just creeping me. I don't know, like when I look at pictures and I have seen it, like I drove by it, but I never went into it. I don't have a personal story to it, but I know some people who do. But honestly, they say that like, you just get this really bad, like feeling of guilt when you walk in, apparently apparently but it always kind of reminds me of like <laughs> where the old guy is building like the house in monster house that scene because it's just in the middle of nowhere like why would you build a castle in the middle of nowhere unless you're like a vampire i think i would understand but yeah kind of interesting now there is a portion of burns that i would like to talk about like lawn in the future videos but that is just like it is so rich in dirty history you know there's no address for that on google either it and so like it's kind of hard to like talk about these things because you really can't find them unless you know the people in the town so next one is in bandon oregon which is kind of like south on the beach of Oregon, like the south, southern part of it, right next to Coos Bay. The Haunted Graveyard in Billard's Beach. Pretty scary. The first recipient of the graveyard was a 13 year old girl named Mary Ellen Hamblock. And which is really sad to know that, you know, a 13 year old was the first to lay and rest there. All the rest came after Mary around the 1970s which is the early 1900s the graveyard was sold to the state in 1963 now you're not supposed to enter this graveyard if it's foggy or if it's at night because apparently I don't know something will happen to you like I don't know like I do a lot of graveyard research and for this girl Mary Ellen Hamblock I think that she is like the protector of the graveyard um there's like 
a, like a major personality to every graveyard that will talk to the living and give them signs. Like it was so sunny and stuff. I feel like I really felt like a, a like a childlike freedom there. I, I couldn't explain it, but also there was this woman in the article saying, "Oh, here's a fun tip, kids. Um, my husband entered the cemetery at night and." she hasn't heard anything back from him i'm like what here's a fun tip like what <laughs> i i don't even know if that's true like oh your husband went in that night and never came out you kill him girl yeah when i went I, I went with a couple of friends i have some pictures right here it was one of my friend's birthday it was in october on a full moon and it's kind of crazy because it's in an rv park and then you go up this hill and it's just it's like literally a fairy tale it, it didn't feel like a scary graveyard to me. It felt like very like, like a backyard, like, and you could look out at, on the beach, you could see the ocean. It's absolutely beautiful. I didn't get creepy vibes from it. Now that's my personal experience, but apparently a woman lost her husband to it. So uh, be careful, be careful out there, especially husbands. So next one. Christmas was good this year. This one is in Astoria, Oregon, which is literally the top left corner of Oregon. And it's the Shanghai Tunnels underground of Astoria. Um, so you literally, if you walk on Astoria ground, you're gonna walk it on top of these tunnels. And let me tell you about them. So Astoria, Oregon was known as the wickedest city in the world. Some say worse than New Orleans. Now I'm gonna talk about why it would be worse than New Orleans, but we'll get into it. On December 8th, 1922, a fire happens in Astoria Fire District and promptly they rebuilt after the fire, which looks the same currently now. But under the streets, they kept it for a quote unquote time capsule. But would you not know? that there was victims of this per se time capsule. So the victims of these tunnels was they would get quote unquote Shanghai. Now I had to look this up too because I did not understand what that meant. It sounds a little scary. <laughs> sounds like I shouldn't say it. It's basically a practice around vices. They take a young male suitable for a job, you know, you talk to him, warm him up and you drug him. After he gets way too off his rocker, you drag him under these tunnels to a boat. Now, the term Shane Hyde is because you would wake up in the middle of the ocean on the longest route to Shanghai, China. <laughs> so these freaking captains of these boats would just lure these fucking young males because they were low on staff. So that is why they call them the Shanghai Tunnels. Now, in Oregon right now, in 2024, there is 432 people missing. Now, how many victims of these tunnels was 1,500 people were saying hide. <laughs> like, like, that's scary. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Astoria overall has a very cryptic ocean feel. I really enjoy it. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, the SpongeBob SquarePants Sue type of feeling. It's where Goonies the movie was filmed. So that's pretty cool. You can also book a tour of these tunnels. Um, like they are very popular and you know, there's a lot of scary stories like people screaming in the tunnels. I mean, I would be too. I got drugged and then was like in these tunnels and getting put on the boat, like sacking me, like what? So it's borderline slavery what happened in Astoria, Oregon. Um, but yeah, now the last one my fellow humans, is where I reside now. So, let's get into it. It is called St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church. It is now a restaurant in Bend, Oregon. Now Bend is in the central of like, basically the middle of Oregon. Um, it was a Catholic school built in 1936. Once the classrooms, but now it's a hotel room. Now there's two buildings. Um, the restaurant was the actual schoolhouse where they were learning stuff, but the theater and the hotel part now is their dorms basically. So I went into the restaurant this morning for, guess what, Sunday brunch. And um, it's very gritty. 
there. I have never went there, so that's why I had to go today because I was like, why am I talking about the most scariest places if I haven't even been to one of them? So, it does look like like the fountain and the stuff in the other building. It looks like right out of like a Hellraiser scene. Um, because like, why is this like cross fountain like in a children's school? It just... <laughs> Once a proper church house, now into a bustling restaurant, and now with burlesque shows and other performances. So that might be the reason why the nuns are kind of mad. I mean, if you had like a prim, proper school, and you smack kids with a ruler, and now these girls, you know, with their tatas out, you know, walking around, yeah, I feel like I would be a little mad. Um, I do have some videos of what I took, but only thing that was kind of weird, um, the food was amazing, don't get me wrong. I loved the coffee, I loved my biscuits and gravy. But the only thing that was weird is when I was filming, the camera flipped upside down. And that only happens like every so often, so it's just kind of weird that it happened in there. That I used to babysit here in this town, probably grown up now, but it looked like the kid I used to babysit and maybe that's just me in my weird head, but it did, I was like, is that, is that? No, no, you know? Overall, very nice atmosphere. I love the chandeliers. You know, think of like the color emerald green and like cherry wood, you know? It feels like, like a library. It feels really nice, but it is interesting that that used to be a Catholic school for children. Thank you for watching my gremlins. That's all I have for today, but hope you guys will tune in for my video next month. So if I miss anything, please write it in the comments below because, you know, but thank you, Gremlins, for watching. I really appreciate you hearing my rambles about some scary paranormal places. Um, wear your evil eye and um, keep living because you'll never know. I love you, Gremlins. Mwah!